So you're thinking about converting your house plants to LECA. Well, you've clicked on the right video because this video is everything you need to know about LECA, okay? By the end of this, you'll know not only how to convert your plants to LECA, but also whether or not you want to do it. Let's get into it, shall we? Semi-hydro, semi-hydroponics, is when instead of soil, you use pon or leka, leka, whatever you want to call it to pot up your plants. Size does matter, so use an appropriate size pot. Too big of a pot won't allow for your plant to properly dry between waterings. Use as pH neutral of water as possible to fill your reservoirs to that one third mark. Once the reservoir is empty, you repeat the process. Why are you switching to LECA in the first place? Uh, most commonly, fungus gnats. LECA is a, a great way to reduce fungus gnats in your home. In fact, since I've switched my plants back to soil, it is clear that LECA was making a difference with the fungus gnat situation. Now that my plants are in soil, I do see a lot more fungus gnats, which I am trying to combat and find solutions for, but when they were in LECA, that was not an issue for me. Also, you commonly hear people wanting to switch to LECA because they have a problem understanding when to water their plants. The fact that you can see your roots nice. in LECA really does help you better understand the health of your plant, especially if you're just beginning with plants and getting into house plants. You've killed a lot in the past, perhaps. I know that's what that was me. That was why I switched to LECA. LECA really helped me understand those roots better and helps me understand when they wanted water, when they didn't, and how they grow. Through the process, it has shown me that it is more about the soil in which we use. And I do go deeper into this in another video. You can also use, which was one of my favorite things when first starting LECA, was the amount of containers I could reuse. I had all these glass containers laying around and the fact that I could also go to the, the thrift store and find just so many different containers. I had a lot more options with LECA. even though you do have the option of drilling a hole into the glass, which may be in the long run, you know, a smart move. You don't have to, and I didn't do it. I do have a video on how to do it if you do want to do it. Just continually doing that to a bunch of containers. Also, I didn't want to ruin containers. You find what works best for you and you stick with it. I'm on a little bit on the lazy side, gonna be honest. I've heard those as probably the most common reason people talk about wanting to switch their plants in to LECA. I'm gonna throw this in real quick. You go on vacation. It is pretty easy to just tell somebody, hey, just make sure the water reservoirs, once they're empty, you refill them. Pretty easy to do. And soil, you know, trying to tell somebody when to water what plant and not another one is a little bit more complicated. Although I did tailor my care still a little bit with LECA for each individual plant, like Hoyas I let dry out a bit more. Another one I've actually heard as well that I'll throw in is not wanting soil or bugs in your home, which I think especially when you're first getting into plants, that's more of a thing. I think the more comfortable you become, like the more into plants you get, the more comfortable that you are having dirt in the house. If you are just someone that's styling your home with plants for the joy of just having a few plants around, but you don't want to start like your own indoor jungle, then LECA's probably a great option. As your collection grows, it may become harder to keep up with having plants in LECA because your plants, you know, get bigger and there's more LECA to move around. Let me go through the process uh, of converting a plant to LECA because that alone may deter you from switching your plants to LECA. It is a very annoying, tedious process. In time, you do become more used to it and it does become a routine. 
But if it is your very first time using LECA, I do recommend the easiest option, and that is through water propagation. So you prop that plant in water, get some nice roots on it, and then transfer it to LECA. It won't have any soil on its roots, which is the most frustrating thing <laughs> about converting a plant is trying to get the soil off of those roots. And honestly, sometimes it is easier to just propagate a plant and not worry about cleaning those roots. And I had a lemon lime elastica that I just chopped the roots right off, put it in water first, propped it, and then I moved it to Lekka. So I definitely recommend that's the way to go. Some roots are easier to clean than others. All I can say is that in order to be successful with your transition, you just need to remove all the soil, all of it, all of it from the roots. And honestly, it's better to even chop off those roots than it is to leave soil on them. And the reason is, is because any soil left on those roots will just rot away at that root there. It'll stay wet and root rot will set in and next thing you know, your whole plant is looking not so happy. When you place your cutting into the LECA, you do want your LECA to be rinsed and rinse it well. LECA stands for lightweight expanded clay aggregate, right? So it's like little puffs. They're very light, like popcorn clay popcorn. <laughs> it's a very porous ball, so it absorbs the water and then through capillary action it sends the water up to your plant. That clay dust and other things, it will clog up those pores, making it just not as effective. So in the beginning, I would definitely rinse them well, but you do not necessarily have to boil them. I would only boil them if they've been used over a long period of time and after a period of time they do have residue and they may even like get this white residential salt build up or whatever may be build up on those balls by boiling them you'll get rid of that and open up those pores again and just allow it to better do its thing Settle the LECA, I just kind of bang on the sides of the glass just to get it nice and settled in there so your plant is super cozy. If you see any signs of distress in your plant or if you notice that the water isn't being taken in by your plant, remove the reservoir and wait a day or two let the LECA, because the LECA will hold on to a bit of moisture, let the LECA dry a little bit and then you can refill the reservoir. Another thing that you can do to really help your plants in the transition to LECA is by using a heat mat. Roots love a nice warm environment to grow, so if you can give that to them, they will greatly appreciate this. You don't need to do this, but I would say especially if you're working with maybe rare plants or plants that you, you know, really value and hold dear to your heart, a heat mat will definitely do good things for you. Uh, but again, it's not necessary and I don't actually have one myself. I do want one, but I don't have one and I've converted several plants. So again, not necessary, but we'll give you a little, little bump. I also have never used any kind of rooting hormone. I have used Super Thrive. I used it in the beginning and then I haven't used it since and I can't say I noticed a difference one way or the other. So you don't need it either. It may help, but it hasn't helped enough for me, <laughs> for me to keep doing it. I'm very, you know, only what's necessary kind of person. A little bit lazy, but in a good way, I think. Roots do grow back. They regenerate. It is better to damage your root system a little bit than it is to leave soil on the roots. So cleaning your plant's root and converting your plants to LECA is definitely not 
the funnest way to spend a Saturday, okay? And if you wanna grow your plant collection, you will have to spend several Saturdays doing that because unless you have a hydroponic house plant store near you which i have seen them okay I, they are coming possibly to you i don't know but um it's not you know you typically are still seeing them in soil you, you can buy props now which is another great way to go if you're doing LECA, you can buy them propped in, in sphagnum. That's an easier transition sphagnum to LECA. And if you want ferns and if you want other plants, have more fragile root systems. I just don't see them loving the LECA life. So you're gonna have to keep some plants in soil. Some of these more fragile roots, like even Hoyas, honestly, I think are better off in pine. That I do have, you know, a Hoya here that I have in pond. It's actually the only Hoya I have in semi-hydro. No, it's not. I have one more. I lied. I have two. But most of my Hoyas are back in soil. But I do like the pond and I am planning on using pond more with my Hoyas because it does balance the Hoya a lot better than LECA does. But uh, with LECA especially, I, you know, mm, these little balls everywhere and my dog, he would go around and grab those little balls and chew on them and I'm constantly telling him no. Anyways, <laughs> let's stay focused, shall we? So let's get to everyone's favorite part, <laughs> which is fertilizing our plants. Uh, you know, I didn't fertilize my plants into hell. I switched to LECA, so LECA has taught me a lot. I give LECA a lot of credit for where I'm at in my plant journey right now because LECA got me comfortable with fertilizing. You need to be fertilizing your plants. It does seem a little complicated with the little trio, you know, thing and the pH testing. I never did the pH testing thing. I didn't want to do that, and I do use rainwater on a lot, most of my plants. Typically that's how I watered my plants. You know, there'd be times where I didn't have any water in the rain barrel, so I would use my tap water or my filtered water, you know, whatever I had at the moment. Not cold filtered water. You don't wanna use any cold water. Uh, you wanna use warm water again. Those roots like warm water but just wasn't worried about my pH. If you are worried about your pH, you can buy pH testers to test the water, and I'll try to put a link to everything I mention in this video down below for you, but I did fertilize my plants regularly, and you have to be pretty consistent with this. Now, I'm not saying you have to do it every week, the same time, you know, every time, whatever. You can, and that will be great if you can keep that up. There was a point <laughs> where I uh, didn't do much fertilizing of my plants at all. I was very lazy about it. Rainwater does include nitrogen in it, so they did have nutrients from the rainwater. You don't want to neglect them for too long with the nutrients because eventually they will start putting out deformed growth. They will have nu nutrient deficiencies because in LECA, they're not getting it from anywhere else unless you're giving them rainwater like I was. They rely on the nutrients from the fertilizer that you give them. The reason, the big reason that I transitioned all of my plants and why I also say that uh, it may be easier or harder for you with a big collection is because my plants are basically outside. I'm in a patio, you know, I've mentioned that before in other videos about how dirt gets in this little room. My dog, he runs back and forth. When he runs, the dirt flies up into my plants. The wind blows dirt into my, you know, it's just, it's not a very controlled environment. Some people have those big IKEA greenhouse cabinets that is very controlled, you know, dirt's not just flying around in there. It's pretty easy to keep your reservoirs clean. Here it is not, and the amount of like flushing and stuff I have to do to keep up with it, it was too much for me at that point. The amount of dirt that was um, sticking to my plant roots, the plant roots started turning brown and they weren't rotted. It was just the dirt beginning to stick on the roots and it was affecting the pH, it was affecting the way my plants were growing and it was just becoming too much for me, so I decided to switch them all back to soil. I'm gonna try to come up with other ways like beneficial insects to keep 
the fungus gnats at bay because I have a large collection. So I'm, I want to find very natural ways to combat it. And because I'm outside, I don't really care that much that there's bugs. There's always going to be bugs where I'm at here. You know, I can't get away from the bugs out here. <laughs> and actually, I originally made the switch to LECA because I hated putting my finger in dirt. I hated like you know, having to dig my finger all the way down to see if the plant needed water or not because, you know, they have those water meters, but for some reason it just, I don't trust anything else but my finger. <laughs> but now it doesn't bug me as much. I don't know. I'd rather do that than the other things. <laughs> uh. If you're still considering giving LECA a try, do know that you can always use LECA as an amendment or for, uh, you know, the bottom of terrariums. It makes a good false bottom. It could also be used, I've seen people use it as a top layer for their plants to also help prevent fungus gnats. So you can experiment and use LECA in different ways. If you are someone that wants to grow your collection and uh, you love plants and you want to keep experimenting with plants, I definitely think you should give Lekka a try because it will teach you a lot. But eventually I, you know, will get a cabinet and fill it with plants and maybe then I will use Lekka and I will especially use pond. And you don't have to spend money on the actual pond. You can make your own. It's just pumice, lava rock, some zeolite and you could even add fertilizer to it you know the slow re release fertilizer i also include little mini leca in my mix and it works really well uh, especially for hoya so if you're a hoya grower consider giving that a go first all these ingredients you can use for amendments if in the end you decide you don't like it. And I don't necessarily like the look of Lekka, so that was another thing I struggled with. I ended up, you know, trying to always put like socks over my candle jars that had the plants in it and stuff. And as your plants grow bigger as well, you know, when you're first starting out, I, I got a lot of little plants. I just struggle balancing moss poles in Lekka and I have trouble with all that it requires <laughs> me to do with the Lekka. The, these balls just start getting everywhere and it, to me, it just became more work than soil personally, but it may be, may be right for you. So let me know if this video helped you and what you've decided to do, whether you're switching or staying or what. If you have any questions, please ask below. Check out my Etsy for some cute plant witch t-shirts now available. It's a great way to help support this channel. Let's see you next week. Bye.